and welcome to the GA Huddle. My name is Carl Friedman. I'm the editor of Gaming America. Today we have uh, Melanie Johnson joining us. She's the president and COO of the Borgata Hotel, Casino and Spa. Uh, Melanie, welcome to the huddle. Thank you. Uh, I just want to um, start off with asking, um, we're a couple of months in, but can you describe your sense of relief that uh, land-based operations are back to full capacity. And I guess this is a kind of a two-part question. Uh, the second being, is there a kind of a sense of a guarded optimism right now? Well, very happy that we're open and we can bring our employees back to work and we can invite our guests to have a great experience at Brigada. Yeah. Um, when we were closed, very eerie feeling, walking through a casino floor with no music, no customers, no employees, and then fast forward, we're open with no restrictions right now. We still have employees and guests that opt to wear their face masks, which yeah. is perfectly fine. And then we have those that have been fully vaccinated, uh, like myself, who choose not to wear the mask. Uh, I was guarded initially, but now I feel more comfortable. And if there's a situation that I feel I need to wear the face mask, I do so. But having all of our restaurants open, having all of our table games open, having the slot machines open, not having to have uh, the polycarbonate barriers to protect guests, employees. It's, it feels good, it feels liberating, and it's a sense of normalcy that I think all of Amer Americans have been waiting for. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and has Borgata been able to uh, bring all of its employees back uh, in order to uh, proportionately account for the demand uh, brought on by the full return? Unfortunately not. And the reason behind this is we're having the same problem that the rest of uh, America is having about getting uh, team members back to work. So is there a shortage of labor? Yes, there is. We're doing everything humanly possible to offer employee employment to our employees to get them back on board. But in Atlantic City, every uh, gaming establishment is having the same problem that we are having. So we are having to right-size our business in order to be able to take care of the customers uh, with the number of employees that we have. So we are making sure that we only sell what we can take care of currently. Right. Um, so is the Borgata as familiar now as it was pre-pandemic? I mean, are, you mentioned that... Um, uh, face masks are optional and the barriers have come down. So is it, uh, is it kind of a return to how things uh, were uh, before the pandemic hit? Yes, we have returned back to the way things were. Right now we're offering entertainment in the music box. We have comedy shows. Yeah. Uh, we're also booking our headliners for our event center. And we're proud to say we've opened a gypsy bar, which is a staple at Regatta. Yeah. So things have come back to normal. Guests are happy. Uh, fine dining restaurants, uh, happy to say that we've just uh, added a new venue to our portfolio. It's American uh, Bar and Grill, well received by the guests, great product. And we have Chef Aram in there uh, featuring Chef Aram, who's the uh, culinary artist, and he makes the magic happen in that restaurant. <laughs> See, I, I just want to get a sense on, on what scale efforts are being implemented uh, to future-proof uh, the Borgata um, as contactless and cashless options become more popular. Okay, one of the big initiatives that we've just executed is mobile check-in. So that gives the customer the option to check in via their cell phone, get their room key via cell phone, and not have to go to the front desk, not have to touch anything. and um, it's uh, something very new, it's exciting. Uh, we're looking forward to this. Uh, we just had a major uh, floor conversion with our slot machines and the rest of our casino management system. And uh, we're building our platform for cashless transactions in the future. Yeah, and, and kind of uh, building on that, um, can you uh, give us a few other examples of how um, you're kind of elevating the guest experience while at the same time being being mindful of, uh, of, of safety measures and still um, uh, making sure that people are in a, in a uh, relaxed and yet uh, safe environment. Right. 
Uh, one of the things that we're doing at our outdoor pool right now, we're testing this, it's uh, ordering the uh, uh, code on your, um, on your seats. Uh -huh. uh, the order can be placed via cell phone and it's delivered directly to the guests. So that's one of the enhancements that we're looking forward to and then fully executing that. Uh, we are continuing to have our hand washing stations on the yeah. floor. We have two custom built. I have no intentions of moving that because it's still being well received by both guests and employees. And right now we still have the, the codes on our menu in the event that the customer does not want to touch that menu and would prefer to order from their cell phone. So those are the things we're continuing to do because safety is first and foremost for both our guests and our team members. Uh, and just um, speaking to you directly, uh, can you tell us about um, a pivotal experience in your career? Uh, you can draw a direct line from where you are today, just uh, looking back on your career. I'm from Southern Louisiana, and one of the, a, a huge catastrophic event for us was Hurricane Katrina. Right. Uh, but it was isolated to a smaller portion of the United States. So it was the Mississippi Gulf Coast that was devastated. So you're in this pocket, whereas the rest of the United States was open. You could travel and you could do whatever you want. You still had that freedom. But with COVID-19, it pretty much shut the world down. Yeah. And that was a very humbling experience for me where I thought Hurricane Katrina was devastating and uh, maneuvered and, and worked our way through this and recovered, but going through COVID-19, uh, everyone was on the same platform. So right. that just made me think very differently about how I managed myself, how I managed the property, how to manage customers, how to uh, manage employees and have more empathy, not sympathy, right. but empathy, walking in those shoes to make sure that we are doing the right thing every single day where health and safety was full first and foremost. That's why when our competitors chose to open in early July of 2020, we waited. We wanted to make sure that we had all of our health and safety protocols in place uh, in order to protect my employees and my guests and to provide an experience that was representative of Brigada. Right. So that's that's the perfect example of um, how how to lead by example, um, uh, especially considering the last year. Would, would you agree with that? In terms of that, that's uh, that's kind of a uh, uh, a method of, of of your approach to leadership. Yes, it is. Uh, I believe in walking in shoes and understanding the the employee journey, understanding the guest journey. And listening, I, listening is first and foremost for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to hear what you've got to say. I want to understand what you have to say. And we make decisions based upon that. I don't believe in coming in and it has to be my way. It's a team ever effort and it's collective. And if you get individuals to buy in, you have much more success. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, building on that as well, can you detail the importance of, of having a grounded team around you um, in order to navigate these unprecedented um, disruptions, but as well to recognize opportunities. Uh, we had an incident that happened on Saturday with a power outage. I can use that as a prime example. I am so fortunate to be surrounded by great team members. I literally sat there, made one call, checking on surveillance for because surveillance has to be up and operable on the gaming floor. Otherwise, we have to shut gaming down. Right. But just made three or four strategic calls, sat in my place, waited for follow-up. And in 33 minutes, fortunately, the power issue was resolved. You could hear the guests do a round of applause on the gaming floor. But it's, it's managing by allowing your leaders to do what they do best yeah. versus wreaking havoc. It's staying calm, setting the pace, and allowing them to know that I trust in their ability to execute. Exactly right. So giving them that autonomy and then uh, working to their strengths, that, that, uh, mm -hmm. that really works to, to a, a real cohesive team. Um, and just lastly, I just wanted to ask, uh, what are you seeing to support uh, data from UNLV's Center for Gaming Research uh, that sports betting in New Jersey is, is dramatically helping 
um, to recover lost revenue uh, from land land based closures last year. Uh, it's a combination of online gaming and sports betting that's truly helping. And what has it done for us? It's allowed us to uh, open our database to a broader group of individuals who may not have been uh, brick and mortar casino players. So right now it's an ac acquisition for us. Mm -hmm. This is what we're looking forward to. We are having uh, new people involved in gaming and uh, wanting to come and visit our establishments. If it's not just Brigada, it's one of the other MGM properties. Exactly. Right. Great. Well, thank you very much, Melanie. It's been wonderful speaking with you and uh, glad you could make it to the huddle. Thank you. Have a great day. You too.